Yeah, we on boss talk one on one. One on one. Yeah, we gonna talk. What about and, and then the school shooting, right? The, the kid that took a gun to school and 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 uh, here in Texas again, um, and he was being bullied at school or whatnot, or, and then they had a fight, a brawl, and then all of a sudden he uh, came out of his bag and, and, and shot the, the other kid, right? And a teacher was graced. Um, why does this anger come from, Melvin? What, what? But a lot of times, it'd be a go a little bit deeper than that. Not only the bullying, he's probably seeing his parent getting abused. Wow. And all type of violence and abuse. At the end of the day, it all come to he probably see more abuse than what he's just taken uh, from being bullied at school. But also why you bring up bullying at school, uh, why is it when these youths get bullied in school cannot go and get an education? What is the difference in 1965 during the civil rights era when they wouldn't allow you to get an education? Mm -hmm. Segregation, and they fought for these youths, high school, colleges for blacks to go to school. But now because of the culture and the terrain within these communities, these youths are not being given a chance to grow. Wow. And it starts from the fruit of the poisonous tree. They can't help the environment they're in. We can't blame them for the conditions they're in. We need to be builders, not destroyers. Mm. So at the end of the day, uh, I just think the youth need to be able to communicate and show that we care about them and show them a different way and create jobs for them, opportunities, because nowadays they're imprisoned in their self. In L.A., you can't go 10 blocks in any direction without a rival gang. I was going to ask about that because that's something that we, we have sectioned off places here. You have like uh, Pleasant Grove, you have Oak Cliff. You have different places here where people don't go to certain areas because of they don't deal with the people in those areas. But you guys are a little bit different. You guys are so, it's, it stretches from street to street, mm -hmm. uh, block to block. Every 10 blocks, you have a, a different, on the west side, our uh, demographics are 20s, the 30s, the 40s, uh, the Van Ness boys, the uh, Black Peach Stones, 59 Brims in the 50, the Rolling 60s, a Trey Gangsters. Uh, Hoover's, uh, uh, Inglewood families, uh, Underground, Block, Raymond, uh, 111, Payback. Uh, you got just a litany I, my of wife, organizations. My wife had asked you last time about uh, structure, right? And um, I see, uh, I always see uh, 50, Mac, 55 Crip, uh, Crip Mac. Uh, I see him a lot. I know you don't watch social media, but at the end of the day, do the do they do the neighborhoods do they have any structure within that neighborhood that deal with each other because of the neighborhood that they've been in for so many years? Is there any any structure? Well, I'm gonna put it like this. I'm not gonna speak on other gangs. I can just tell you the difference between a struck a street gang. A street gang has no structure, to whereas a prison gang has structure, a chain of command. Sergeants, general, lieutenants, torpedoes, one man say something, everybody go. But when it comes to Crips and Bloods, these are street gangs. Wow. So there's, there's no one supreme leader. You just have hundreds of groups wow. of men that basically uh, draw their own uh, laws and bylaws. Mm -hmm. So there's no structure. And there's a divide, but the difference, when I came into this game in 1971, uh, we were united as a whole. Then, in, starting in 79, 81, when Big Rick got killed, that really separated and divided. So a lot of times our dialogues won't be the same if you sit next to me. Uh, I come from an area where everybody was united as well as seeing them when they were divided to where there was other ones that came later on. They come in basically warring with each other. Wow. Wow. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.